Christian Business Connection, connecting your business or ministry to the world. Good morning and welcome to the CBC Radio Show. I'm your host, Evangelist Nona Thomas, declaring as I always do that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. I hope you are rejoicing with me on this Sunday morning. Oh, God is good and he is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. If you're on your way to your church morning service or if you're coming from an early morning service, I want to say thank you for tuning in to the CBC radio show, The Christian Business Connection. You know, God is so good. I've been doing this program for so many years and I am not tired yet. You know, I think that's a good question. Anybody tired of working for Jesus? How about that? I know you're not. We we don't we don't retire. We just I don't know. We just stop till we can't maybe go anymore. All right. Because truly only what you do for Christ will last. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Well, I want to tell you, I got some soldiers on the front line who are on the program this morning who the Lord has blessed in business and in ministry. And I'm so excited to have them on the program. I want to first say a special good morning to Randall and Son's Funeral Home, Mr. Eddie Randall. God bless you. Thank you so much for being a sponsor of the CBC radio show. May the Lord continue to bless you as he has these many years. I encourage you to go to my website, thecbcradioshow.com, and get information about Eddie Randall and Sons Funeral Home. Well, my exciting guests this morning include my son in the gospel, in the ministry. I just love him. Jamar Church Pinkston. Oh, what the Lord is doing in this young man's life is simply amazing. Tonight, you have the opportunity to come on out as TKO Salon presents Lyricism Open Mic Poetry Event, hosted by Jamar Church Pinkston. He's going to talk about that. I'm so excited. And then also, we have on the program this morning, Pastor Kevin Todd, who is the pastor of the Basics of the Faith Ministry. He's been talking about the workshop on the historical evidence about Jesus Christ. And so that's coming up this Saturday, and he's going to talk about that. We also have on the program today, my dear friend, Apostle Keita Lattimore of New Life Christian Fellowship. She's got an amazing event coming up, Fresh Wind of Glory, Retreat, Women's Movement. Let me tell you, it's going to be a blessing to you. You want to hear her interview. You want to hurry and get your reservation in, your registration, because it's going to be a blessing. I will be emceeing it, and I can't wait for my hair to blow in a fresh wind of glory. Hallelujah. Then we also have a dear friend of the CBC radio show, Vance Watt, who is the worship arts pastor of the Word of Shaw Church. Glory to God. He's going to be talking about the great things that are going on at the Word of at Shaw under the leadership of Pastor Keith Scarborough. So that's going to be a great interview. Friends, we're also going to have our Christian comedy nugget this morning that's brought to you by none other than the Bishop of Comedy, Reggie Ridge. So look, we got a lot of stuff for you to stay tuned to. Don't go anywhere. When I come back, we're going to be talking with Jamar Church Pinkston. Stay with me. I'll be right back. Good morning, everybody. My name is Vance Watt. I'm the worship arts pastor at the Word at Shaw Church here in St. Louis, Missouri, where we serve the community in word and in deed. I'm so excited to be here this morning on the CBC radio show with evangelist Nona Thomas. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to you and your family to come worship with us at the Word at Shaw at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. We're located at 4265 Shaw Boulevard, St. Louis, Missouri, 63110. Or you can visit our website at www.thewordatshaw.com. Org. God bless. Welcome back to the CBC radio show. I'm your host, Evangelist Nona Thomas. And friends, I told you at the top of the program, I was so excited because I have one of my sons who is on the program today. Truly, not he's not my biological son, but sometimes I think he is. He's grown up with my son, Sean Scooter. And I'm telling you, God has truly blessed this young man. So I want to welcome to the CBC radio show, Jamar Church Pinkston. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am wonderful. Now, look, I did not prompt you on this question. I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this question, but I ask everybody who comes on the show this question, okay? 
Okay. And it is, is this the day that the Lord has made for you? Yes, it most certainly is. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on now. You get an A. You get an A. (laughs) (laughs) That's the right answer. That's the right answer. Well, you know, Jamar, I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing in your life. It is truly a testament. And to God be the glory. Uh, You have an exciting event that is coming up tonight. uh, And it is Lyricism Open Mic Event. And it's presented by your salon, TKO Salon. Am I right? Yes, most correct, most so, correct. So tell us about it. All right. Well, it is um, it is an open mic poetry event that I, I started a month ago. This is actually going to be the second time that I do it. Um, a lot of people told me that I'm I'm a really great poet, and you know I got I got something really good to say. So they encouraged me and inspired me to go ahead and start my own poetry event. And I was like, oh, I don't know. I'm kind of nervous. I never did this before. I like I like just going to other people's events, but I knew that the Lord gave me uh, the ability and the platform with my salon to to have an event and to host something that I could help other people with. Uh, you know, a lot of people are nervous or a lot of people are scared to actually speak in front of other people, but they have something that other people need to hear. Sure. And so that's why I was like, you know what? I prayed about it, and I said, well, it took a couple of months, but, you know, everything happens in due time. Right. And eventually I came up with the idea of lyricism. And it just gives people the opportunity to speak what they want to speak. And it's not just poetry. It's not just rapping. But, you know, I have certain artists come through who uh, who do music as well. Um, I do have a, ra- a rapper who comes. I have a comedian. Uh, comedians have come through. It's just an event for anybody who has something to say, to come by and to let other people hear it because you never know what another person is going through and may need to hear the words that you are speaking regardless of how minute you think they may be or how somebody out there needs to hear it. And that's why I held this event. And last month it was a great event. We had almost 100 people in the salon. And this month, is we planning on making it bigger and better. Wow, wow. I, I'm just so excited about it. I tell you, the Lord has just done some phenomenal things in your life, and I know I can say that the best is still yet to come. Don't you agree? Most definitely. I definitely agree with that one. <laughs> now, you know, you, you said the salon. Let, let's pause right there and talk about TKO Salon, can we? Oh, most definitely. Well, TKO Salon got started. We actually got started about four years ago, and I teamed up with my partner, uh, T. Cosmo, one of the greatest stylists in St. Louis. Shout out to her. Uh, We started about maybe four years ago, and I teamed up with her with her salon because I was going to open up my own barbershop. So teamed up with her, brought my barbershop ideas to her salon. It worked out really well. We hired in couple of stylists, a couple of barbers, and before we knew it, we needed a lot more space. (laughs) So about about a year ago, uh, we found a building, and the landlord, they gave us the best deal. We looked at a bunch of different buildings. We found this one building that literally was two blocks away from us. Wow. And the guy, this is the building where we got our cleaning supplies from. We saw him packing up one day. He walked. Uh, he was packing up. We were like, you know, where are you going? He said that he was shutting it down. We talked to the landlords. They gave us the best deal that we could have gotten from any from all the other buildings we looked at. And in two months, we re we transformed that whole building, and we were in it. And it has been one year, and we are excited. The salon has taken off on a whole new level. We have seven stylists and three barbers, well, four barbers now. So it is, it's a pretty big salon. It is, it is. <laughs> and it's really the talk of St. Louis. Um, and, you know, you probably wouldn't toot your own horn, but I'm going to do it for you. Uh, you know, Jamar, you are known as one of the very best barbers in the state of Missouri. Okay? <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. I mean, you. the word is out for real. I'm not just saying this because, you you know, I love you. I'm, I'm saying the word is out. Everybody knows <laughs> about your skills you've been on television you've won contests i would suggest everybody who's listening right now and you need a barber you need to go to tko salon but you might have a little waiting list sometimes am i right 
<laughs> yes, yes, I do go by appointments only, but it, that's okay. Uh, you can always reach me, uh, church314.com. That is the website you can go to. The address to the salon is 9774 St. Charles Rock Road. Zip code is 636. 636- Three zero seven four. All right. Give, sure. give us that phone number again. That phone number to the salon is 314-551-2400. So I want to let my listeners know, if you're just tuning in this morning, we're talking to Jamar Church Pinkston. And let me let me just say right here also, uh, because you, you didn't linger on it too long when you were talking about poetry. You know, when, when you were growing up, we thought, okay, you know, rapping, you know, Christian rapping, we, we <laughs> knew that you were great at that. We knew that, you know, the Lord was truly using you. But then this spoken word poetry thing came along. And, Jamar, you are <laughs> fantastic. And Thank that you. the Lord has truly given you such skills. I've had you at one of my events. You've done this all over the city. I mean, just was that just another step from gospel rap for you? You know, I had no intentions on ever being a spoken word artist, but, you know, the Lord does work in mysterious ways. Uh, I saw one of my friends who I used to go to school with, used to go to college with. She saw me in the grocery store, surprisingly, and she said, hey, are you still rapping? I said, yes, I am. She said, well, hey, I have a poetry event coming up that I want you to do a poem at. I'm like, but I'm a rapper. She says, well, poetry and rap are the same thing. just has to be one dozen. So I need you to write a rap. And then I need you to come to my poetry event. I mean, I need you to write a poem, come to my poetry event, and do the piece. And then she walked away from me. <laughs> like, she literally walked. I'm like, but wait, I kind of, no. Uh. And so, one thing, look, needless to say, I ended up writing a poem, went to the event, performed at the event. Everybody loved it, got a standing ovation. And that just kicked the door wide open for me to do poetry and I ended up going actually about three months later it was a po- a citywide poetry uh poetry slam mm-hmm. where about a hundred people competed in it and it was a uh the H HBO was actually the sponsor for the event and that was, we were all gonna have a HBO special uh a five minute segment on the HBO special. So they had a poetry slam and out of these three hundred people there were gonna be six finalists who would make it to the HBO series. I happen to be one of those six finalists. I made it through out of all 300 of those people. I got a standing ovation from the judges. And my mind was so blown because I'm like, I am a rapper. I'm not a poet. (laughs) But apparently I was a poet all along and a rapper. And it just got tapped into. And I I finally brought that to the forefront. And so, yes, uh, six years after that, I am a well-known poet and rapper and barber. So I, it must be Jesus. What you think? Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other way to explain it. For the the way that my career has taken off is nothing but the grace of God. Yes, yes. You know, I just want to give shouts out. I, I, we would be remiss if we did not talk about your mom and dad, uh, Pastor uh, Ed Pinkston and Sister <laughs> Carla Pinkston, because your entrepreneurial skills and and your training you got that from your daddy. Okay, because he's I a great entrepreneur. I definitely, could, I couldn't, I couldn't, I could not do this without without my father he watching him all those years and uh uh actually have him making me and school to wake up seven o'clock in the morning <laughs> to go build fences and 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 dig holes and do all this this work that like oh why does he want to do this why does he want to work for himself like just go work a nine to five and get paid <laughs> you know you know 10 years after the fact i realized that every god god is the orchestrator of all things and it yes. was a reason why he had him as my father while I woke up early in the morning yes. working with him every summer learning those entrepreneurial skills going yes. to the different meetings and things like that because now I have my own business and I have to schedule meetings and I have to be up at 5 and 6 o'clock in the morning <laughs> by myself. If I didn't have that instilled in me as a kid you know, I would be one lazy business owner and That's so right. I definitely have to thank him and applaud him uh, even though I didn't want to and I, I would have an attitude in the morning <laughs> you know, I definitely I definitely appreciate it now, and it was all it was all for my good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your mama's wonderful. I tell you, I love Sister Carla Pinkston. She is a joy, and she also, hey, she had a hand in that too, didn't she? She most definitely did. Uh, she was the one who I would go to. Hey, mom, I wrote a new rap. I want you to hear it. 
okay, I like it. Hey, mom, uh, I got a new poem. I think I want you to try and uh, tell me what you like about it. Well, I think you should change this up. I, I like it like this, but do it. So she she definitely had her hand in uh, helping mold me. And, of course, she came with that nurturing side of it all. So yeah. when I first started out and I felt I didn't do good, was always right there to it was it's okay you know if you don't like it then you could do it you'll do better next time and mm -hmm. she came with that, that good nurturing spirit and so I, I definitely love my mother and i appreciate her and she's come to many of shows and has seen me do my uh do my my practice that's right so that's say. right <laughs> you know and I, I think we also uh have to just mention you know of course you are a member of memorial tabernacle christian life center where we attend under yes. the leadership of pastor rb peterson who has always been supportive hasn't he Always, always. Uh, I actually just completed a documentary that um, I'm putting out, and I, I definitely had to give a shout out to to Uncle Arb, as I like to call him. I've known him for so many years. Uh, it's because of him that we even got started with our first group, Ecclesia, right, right. back in the day with me, Scooter, and, and Kid Three, and all of our other members and uh, our brothers in Christ. It was because of him, and that's how I even got the name Church Boy. It right. started out as Jam Star, <laughs> but we switched it up, and like Church Boy is a much a much cooler name. <laughs> and then as I got older, I dropped the boy off, and everybody calls me Church now. But definitely, I have to give kudos and, and thanks to him for for being there through it all. When I say he was driving that church van all over sure Missouri, <laughs> we was going to all these different churches performing, and he definitely helped me get my start. And, and you know, without him, I probably would still have stage fright. <laughs> and it, he, he definitely was there, always fist pumping. And, you know, I like when y'all do the music like this. He actually jumped on a track or two yeah. uh, on our old CD. Yeah. So I definitely got to give shouts out to Uncle slash Pastor Arby for, uh, for being there and from the jump from the jump yeah i remember those days of ecclesia to god be the glory you all were on you were my guests i remember on tbn praise the lord when i hosted uh -huh. that show and it was such a joy so you're used to you're used to this stuff you know oh yeah it's been a long time coming but you know like i say god god has a plan for everything and he knew all of this he saw all of this from the beginning so yes, it was all it was all, it was all a journey for me he already knew it it right. was just a journey for me right. i didn't know i wasn't <laughs> ready but I'm, I'm in it and like I say I this is still only the beginning I got a yes. long way to go yes, and I, I just thank him and give him praise for everything that he's done for me so far and everything that he's gonna do amen well look we're just about out of time so tell us tonight what time the address phone number uh, all that good stuff all right the the address is 9774 St. Charles Rock Road 9774 St. Charles Rock Road, and it's over in Breckenridge Hills. The phone number is 314-551-2400, and the phone number is a 24-hour line, so somebody's always there to answer. Um, and then, like I said, it's TKO Salon Presents Lyricism Open Mic Poetry Event, hosted by me, Church. And, and this it's, is a free tonight. event. It is actually a free event, and yes. then the the grill. We will actually we actually have a very well known chef who will be cooking up some of the best food that you will have, from turkey burgers to turkey ribs to pizzas to nachos. This is going to be an event that not only will you get some food for your soul, but some food for your belly. <laughs> it's going to be a great event, and like I said, everything is absolutely free. Come out and enjoy it. it. It will definitely be one that you will talk about with your friends and that you will appreciate. Well, I'm so excited. I love you, my son. To God be the glory on how he is spotlighting your gifts in the kingdom. Thank you, Jamar Church Pinkston, for being on the CBC Radio Show. Thank you for having me. Have a great one. All right, friends. We're going to take a short break right here. Stay with me. I'll be right back. Hi, this is Evangelist Nona Thomas inviting you to tune in to Hallelujah 1600 at 4 p.m. every Wednesday for the midweek message. Friends, let me tell you, this program will encourage you. It will inspire you. It will be the boost that will be right on time in the Word of God for your Wednesday afternoon. So tune in every Wednesday, 4 p.m. right here on Hallelujah 1600 for the midweek message with Evangelist Nona Thomas. To God be the glory. 
Welcome back to the CBC Radio Show. I'm your host, Evangelist Nona Thomas. And friends, if you've been listening to the program for the last two or three weeks, we have been talking about this amazing, amazing event that's coming up that I believe will be a wonderful witnessing tool for anyone who's listening to this program or who needs just more information. I'm so excited to have on the program with us this morning, Pastor Kevin Todd of the Basics of the Faith Ministry. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Evangelist. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. I wish I could give you a new question. You know the answer to this question, but I got to ask you. Is Uh, this the day that the Lord has made for you? This and every day is the day that the Lord has made for me. Amen. And I'm so rejoicing in every day. You're glad about it? Every single day, I'm glad and glad and more glad. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. You know, we have been talking uh, for several weeks now about your workshop, your class that's coming up. And, you know, just in case there's somebody who has not heard in depth talking about what the Lord has given you to share with our St. Louis community. It's coming up this Saturday, all right? And you've got two opportunities for people to come on out, one that's going to be done in Spanish and one in English. So give us information about what the Lord is doing. So thank you very much, first of all, uh, for allowing me to be on the show. Like I said, uh, uh, you know, before we came on, I I really enjoy it. I appreciate God even giving you the vision to even do uh, uh, such a medium as this. And so God is using you greatly, and I appreciate you being obedient to him uh, to allow him to use you. So I want to just say thank you for that. Um, But, yes, our workshop is going to be the historical evidence for the resurrection of Christ, and we're going to be presenting it on Saturday, which is this coming Saturday on March the 26th. It's going to be held at the Abundant Life Community Church uh, on the south side of St. Louis, and the name, something that occurred to me is that the name on the sign of the church is written in both English and Spanish. So if mm-hmm. you see English, if you see Spanish, don't get thrown off. You're at the right place, right? Just read closely, and you'll see the English there, too. Um, the church is located at 1216 Sydney, and the English session is going to be in the afternoon between 1 and 3. If you have any Spanish-speaking friends or if you speak Spanish yourself, you're welcome to come in the morning between 9 and 12. And what we're going to be talking about is the evidence that is understood and accepted today generally by most New Testament and historian, New Testament scholars and historians, even those who are not Christians, they are convinced that the disciples saw the resurrected Christ. And we're going to be discussing why they are so convinced. Uh, Why do they believe this? And why is that data so credible? Why is it that atheists and non-believers and and historians are convinced that this really did take place based on the historical data that we have today? That's what we're going to discuss. You know what I like, uh, just the first three words, the historical evidence. Okay, this is not theory. There is This is evidence. Am I right about it? Yes, ma'am. Amen. This is evidence. This is, <clears throat> so what, what scholars do, and when I use the word scholar, I'm talking about people who study and are educated in the field. They're trained. They're published in their area of expertise, published in like trade journals. And these historians use a historical method to validate documents. And they use the historical method to validate what it is that they're talking about. And based on that data, they make decisions based on what happened in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just as much as we've done with Alexander the Great and other people, they make decisions to say, okay, yeah, this re- we do believe, based on the evidence, that these events actually took place. Um, and we have that with our Bible. And, and, and I think that that's so encouraging for us as believers, because oftentimes, we we accept things as true without any convincing at all because we just believe it. But then there are others who are kind of skeptical, and they don't. But whether you're skeptical or whether you're already convinced, just knowing the fact that God is so powerful to preserve this evidence for us and to make it available for us is just is just 
it's just absolutely mind-boggling. Yes, it is. It is. And what I love about this, as I said, I, I look at what you're doing kind of twofold in that it's a wonderful witnessing tool for those of us. You know, I, I'm a believer. The Holy Ghost just revealed to me. You know what I'm saying? I, I believe it. You know, I, I, I believe it. Okay. And I think that this go, going to your workshop will help the believers, will help those who as a witnessing tool so that they can show the historical evidence to the person who says, well, you know, where is that at? Or, 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 or why should I believe that? You know, it's so whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Amen. Oftentimes uh, what we think, and, and it's going to, it blows our mind that we think that if you're talking to a non-believer, you know, because I'm going to tell you, I wasn't always a believer, and the Holy Ghost revealed it to you. The Holy Ghost revealed it to me, too. But when the Holy Ghost revealed it to me, it was after, you know, my my, my pastor had to sit down for many, many hours <laughs> and show me things, because I had a lot of questions. You know, I was a skeptic. I was a skeptic. Mm -hmm. And so he had to show me a lot of things. And one of the things that we want to do as believers is immediately throw the Bible out as soon as the skeptic says, "Well, don't tell me that just because God said it, and mm -hmm. don't 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 tell me I should believe it because it's in the Bible, mm -hmm. you know." And so we want to throw the Bible out, but as soon as you throw the Bible out, you've thrown away your your biggest piece of evidence. Because I'm going to tell you what the historians that I'm referring to, they mm -hmm. don't throw the Bible out. The atheist uses the Bible, amen. Mm -hmm. He uses the Bible. The skeptic uses the Bible to make his or her point. And so the meaning, the moment we throw the Bible out, we've thrown away our greatest tool. And we're going to talk about that on the 26th. Yes, yes. And what a wonderful blessing that the pastor of the church has allowed you to come in and do these different sessions. Isn't that great? Pastor Hedwig Philippe is a friend of mine. Um, he is a pastor who moved here from the Dominican Republic. Uh, he's been a pastor of this church for several years now. He actually pastors two churches, one in St. Charles and this one on the south side of St. Louis. Um, the, the, the congregation is a Hispanic congregation, uh, but I go there, I preach there, I attend services there, um, and he has opened his doors to allow this, to, this workshop to take place. He wants it, when I first mentioned it to him, he was like, is it any way that the Hispanic congregation can come to? That mm -hmm. was the first question out of his mouth. And I was like, well, of course it is, you know. And so we're going to do the two sessions. He is an awesome man of God, um, very, very knowledgeable and power in the Word. And I hope when you come, meet him. Because one of the things that I would really like to see us do, and you and I talked about this before on the mm -hmm. show, mm -hmm. is to begin to, like, kind of understand other cultures. We're all believers. We believe the same one Lord, as the Bible says. He's, he's a believer. And uh, it's just nice to be able to, to meet new people and to network yeah. outside of our normal circle. It is. And I'm glad you said that because, you know, um, when, you know, sometimes when we come to networking events, when we come to different things, you know, we, we, we just pass a card or we'll just say hi, but we don't really get in depth. And, and when you said network, that just made me think we just came from the evening of Synergy uh, networking event. And, you know, some amazing things happened there. The, the, the fellowship, the networking, it was great, wasn't it? You know the worst thing about that event? What? Is that I wish that everybody in St. Louis could have been there. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was so amazing. I, I went, and uh, I'm so glad that you have it. I, I know that you're going to have more. And God really, really blessed that event. I met people that I didn't know before. I was able to... to, to uh, to form, I met one young lady there who, her her job is to help ministries, right, to begin to do things like fundraisers and promotions and things of this nature, and that's what she does. Mm. And I was like, really? And so we were able to exchange numbers, and uh, we we've got some meetings set up so we can so we can talk more. But uh, it was an awesome event. I, I met people. My mom. She was having some issues with her house, right? So there was a guy there who who's a, in, works in construction, and I was able to get his number. And uh, it was it was very nice. So it wasn't just this was an event for Christians who are in business or Christians who have ministries, but we were all believers, and we were able to come together just like in the Book of Acts to help one another. Yes. And that was it was a beautiful thing. Yes. It was beautiful. 
Yes. And, and, and that type of thing also we expect at the workshop because, you know, I, when I'm interested in attending, even though, of course, you know, the, the I'm interested in attending the uh, the Spanish session. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I know anything except maybe hola, okay? But I'm so, I'm interested because, as you said, to network with other people, other cultures, I mean, it's just wonderful because, you know, we're, we're not in a bubble by ourselves, all right? You right. know, same God, believers all over the world. We need to come together amen and and i'm gonna tell you now spanish has opened up many doors for me mm-hmm. for preaching i was uh, i work with people all around the caribbean um who are spanish speakers and in latin america who are spanish speakers they they my phone rings a lot i was sharing with somebody just last night that my phone rings more from outside of the country than inside of the country <laughs> You know, it's amazing. I, I was I never really looked at that, but when I look through my registry of phone numbers of people that call me about regarding different things who just need a word or to need to be comforted or they want some counseling, sure. I get more calls from outside of the country than inside of the country. Wow, wow. And yeah, I never noticed it until yesterday. And so, you know, being able to learn another language, I did because of your show, uh, a, a man called me wanting to learn Spanish the other day. You know, last week you said he heard me on your show, and I want to thank you for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, um, what? what, It's it's the Holy Ghost. He's the one Mm -hmm. who elevates. He is the one who promotes. And because you are lifting up Jesus, and you're you're doing it on, I almost want to say on two continents. Okay, (laughs) because you're doing that, the Lord is elevating you. I want to let my listeners know if you're just tuning in this morning, we're talking with Pastor Kevin Todd of the Basics of the Faith Ministry. Pastor Todd, give us the location again and the times and your telephone number for people to get in contact with you. The name of the workshop is the historical evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we're going to, this is going to be Saturday, March 26th. It's going to be held at the Abundant Life Community Church located at 1216 Sydney. It's like the person's name, like Sydney Portier. Like uh, 1216 Sydney. And that's going to be right off of Arsenal and 55. So if you know where Anheuser-Busch is there, you get off at 55 and Arsenal, go toward Anheuser-Busch and make a left, go to the second stop sign and make a right. The church is right there on the corner. It's very easy to find. Um, I've also been directing people to your website, www.thecbcradioshow.com. There's a flyer there. You can call me by phone. 314-643-7050, and I can give you any more information that you need. I'm excited about it. I want to thank you so much for sharing your vision and what God is going to do with us in these last weeks. It's really a blessing. It's a blessing. And also later in the program, we have a special segment that you're going to do, and we're looking forward to that as well. Thank you, Pastor Kevin Todd, for being a part of the program. Thank you for having me. All right, friends, we're going to take a short break right here. Stay with me. I'll be right back. Hello, this is Reggie Reg, and you're listening to the CBC Comedy Nugget. And today's nugget is love. Now, you know it's love. We just got out of February. Now, here it is in March. Now, you still got to love your boo, you know. And I'm just telling mine that I love her because this month is my birthday. <laughs> and hey, I want to love your neighbor, boo boo. <laughs> love your life. Talk at you soon. Welcome back to the CBC Radio Show. I'm your host, Evangelist Nona Thomas. And friends, I told you at the top of the program that a fresh wind was blowing, blowing, blowing. And I'm excited about it because of the upcoming Fresh Wind of Glory Women's Retreat and Movement coming up in April 7th through the 8th. And I tell you, I'm so excited about it. And I have on the program with me this morning the woman of God, the apostle, Keita Lattimore of New Life. Christian Fellowship Church, and the Lord has blessed this woman of God to put it on her heart, and she is hosting this event. So I want to welcome to the CBC Radio Show, Apostle Keita Lattimore. Good morning, Apostle. Good morning, Evangelist. Good morning, all you radio listeners. God bless you this morning. Amen. Well, you know what you know what I got to ask you. You know the drill by now, <laughs> surely. Is this the day that the Lord has made for you? This is the day that the Lord has made for me, and I'm going to choose 
I'm going to choose to rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> Amen. It is a choice. Amen. Amen. And you know what? That That's the key word. You got to choose life. You got to choose to rejoice because if we look at things around us, Apostle, it, you know, it, 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 it can be kind of ugly, but we know God's word is true, don't we? We know that his word is true, and he is a man that he cannot lie. That's Neither it. is he the son of man, and he can repent, then he should repent. But every word that comes out of his mouth is true, amen? And we can be sure of it. And he watches over his word to perform it, and it would not return to him void. We bless his name. Yes, that was a good word for me this morning. That was all right right there. You know, uh, and God is going to truly perform his word over this upcoming women's retreat and movement. Tell us about the fresh wind of glory would you? Well, the Lord gave me this, and I want to make it really short. Um, the Lord gave me this, and he told me to put this together, because what he's going to do, hallelujah, is he's going to thrust women, hallelujah, into a place where we've never been in before. He's going to deliver some women. He's going to pull women out of corners, hallelujah. He's going to pull women that's been set down, pushed back, pushed to the side, told they wasn't anointed, told they couldn't do anything, hallelujah. And God is going to meet them right there. So we are excited. And when you say fresh and then you put the wind with it, <laughs> hallelujah, that <laughs> blows all that old, that the old and the dead and the ugly away. Hallelujah. All the things from our past, the things that just keep trying to oppress us and depress us. Hallelujah. And then the glory comes. Hallelujah. <laughs> then the glory comes with it. Hallelujah. And then the Lord crowns us with his glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And when he crowns us with his glory, hallelujah, we are made new. Hallelujah. We are made new. We are, we are renewed. We redeemed. Hallelujah. And then he's going to establish us. He's going to establish us. He's going to plant us. And then he's going to shoot us into our destiny in Jesus name. He said he's going to release some generals into the kingdom of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's good news right there. <laughs> and you know, what, what, it, what also excites me about um, this, uh, and as you said, uh, movement is that yes. I, I really know it to be so. There is really a fresh wind that is blowing through the entire kingdom of God through the body yes. of Christ. Some yes. things are being uh, flipped over. <laughs> some things yes. are being revealed. There's some new <laughs> things going on yes. in the body of Christ, but it's all good. It's, it's, yes, it's all it good. So yes. tell us about your speaker. I know your guest speaker for that event is phenomenal. She is phenomenal. She is Prophetess Michelle McLean Walters, and she is actually John Eckert's right-hand uh, prophetess in the church. And she's right up under uh, Crusaders Church uh, with John Eckert. And uh, this is a mighty woman of God. I've been knowing her uh, for about 12 years now, um, and of course, from the first time that I met her to now, God has really um, taken her to another place. She's written books. Uh, she's written uh, The Prophetic uh, Edge, and there, I have some on my website. Uh, I have some pictures also that I posted on Facebook. Uh, she's written a book, The Esther Anointing, and uh, the Lord has really taken her from a place and really given her the ability to really empower women. And so we are really looking forward to that. We are really looking forward to the gift of God that's coming to us. She agreed immediately as soon as she heard the, the title that the Lord had given. She was excited. <laughs> so she she's ready. Hallelujah. And I really want to encourage everyone, uh, we'll give out uh, our ministry information, Evangelist Nona will do that. I really want to encourage everyone to get her book. She's going to be teaching us in the workshop from her books and also from her own life experiences as a woman and as God calling her as a prophetess uh, to the nations. And she travels not only in the United States, but in other countries as well. So we are just waiting, anticipating the blessing that God has uh, waiting for us. Yes, yes. And and not only are we going to be blessed uh, by her as the uh, as your featured speaker, you have several other people on uh, the program for those two days. Tell us about them. Well, I do. Two of the people are, they're from St. Louis, and then two of them are from out of town. 
And the Lord put these women in my spirit. And what the Lord told me to do, he said, I don't want I don't want you uh, chasing names. Mm -hmm. I want to show you who I want involved in this meeting. And so he said, don't chase names, but I have anointed them to be involved in this. And the Lord, and these are powerful women of God. Uh, we have uh, Evangelist Sarah White. She is here from St. Louis. We have Minister Deborah Henderson Cook. She is here from St. Louis. She's our praise dancer. She's one of the praise dancers. Uh, we have Evangelist Bridget Dallas. She is coming from uh, Jacksonville, Florida. And then we have uh, Prophetess Or. Washington, and she is coming from Houston, Texas. So we are very, very, very excited about what the Lord is doing. These are powerful women of God. Keep watching them because God is getting ready to take them to a place that they don't even know, I don't think, as of yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And and, and as you were saying, uh, the locations and where folks are coming from, I'm thinking, Lord, you sending them from the north, south, east, and west, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's... And and that's because what the Lord is going to do on that weekend of April 7th and 8th, it really is going to be life changing. And I know we hear that so often. People will say things and they'll put these little catchphrases on things. But I believe, Apostle, when you come expecting something, God is going to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you can ask or think. Am I right? You are correct. And the rest of that scripture says, according to the power that is working in you. Mm. So what kind of power and what kind of expectation do you have according to the power, the faith that's working in you? Hallelujah. So we want the women to believe God beyond your your any belief that you believe him for stretch of faith stretch of faith and believe god hallelujah and he's going to meet you right there amen i want to let my listeners know if you're just tuning in this morning we're talking with apostle keita Lattimore of new life christian fellowship center now apostle uh let's get right to how folks can contact you because i know it's limited seating on this event and we don't want anybody to be left out. So how can folks get in contact with you? I do know that we can go to your website of newlifecfministries.org to get all the information, but give us a phone number as well. Our telephone number to our ministry, it is 314-536-8188. Again, it's 314-536-8188. And, Apostle, this is a two-day affair, April 7th and 8th, and the hotel accommodations are just wonderful. We're going to be staying at the Holiday Inn Hotel in Fairview Heights, and I know that there's a block of rooms that you have available uh, for the guests. So folks need to hurry and move, don't they? They need to hurry and move because the hotel is going to, our deadline to reserve the rooms at a lower rate is March the 8th. So we, we need to hurry and reserve your rooms. You can call the hotel room and reserve your room. You don't have to pay until you actually get there, but you can reserve the room and get your room at a, at a lower rate. At, at this point, up until March the 8th is going to be the cutoff date for the reservation for the rooms. Amen, amen. So, you know, I, I praise God that uh, I'm going to be the mistress of ceremonies for that, but if I just come off the stage and sit down in a chair so I can soak it up, will that be all right, too? <laughs> That's going to be all right. <laughs> There's going to be enough power in the room for you to do that. Hallelujah. Hey, man, we're <laughs> expecting to have revelation, insight, deliverance, fun, sisterhood, all of that. All yes. right. We're just about out of time. Is there anything else you'd like to say in closing this morning, Apostle? I just want to encourage the women to believe God. And, and also, uh, the um, the registration is for, we're going to have on Friday, March the 8th, we're going to have, it's $60 for registration, and that's going to include, we're going to have breakfast, we're going to have a workshop with the prophetess, and then we're going to have dinner. So the Lord told me to do something different, just to kind of love on the women. You, we have to charge, because of course we can't take the full responsibility of paying for everyone to eat. So unfortunately, at this point in our ministry, one day we're going to be there, Amen. but right now, so um, that's $60, and the hotel is going to cater our food to us. They have great food, 
And so we're just looking for the fellowship with us women. And we're going to show the world that we can come together as women. We can love on each other. We can come together and love on each other. Hallelujah. We can come together and love on each other. All this is going on, but we can come together and love and support and encourage each other in the things of God. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm excited about it. Fresh Wind of Glory Women's Retreat and Movement. April 7th and 8th. Apostle Keita Lattimore, thank you for being a part of the CBC radio show today. And thank you for having me. Thank you so very much, Evangelist Nona. Well, all right, friends, we're going to take a short break. Stay with me. I'll be right back. Did Jesus really rise from the dead? Hi, my name is Pastor Kevin Todd of the Basis of the Faith Ministries. The Apostle Paul said, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is in vain. You are still in your sin." But how can we, 2,000 years later, be sure that Christ has been raised? Would it surprise you to know that the vast majority of New Testament scholars, many of whom who are historians and critics, are absolutely convinced that the historical data shows that the disciples believed they saw the risen Lord? Why do scholars today believe that, even as non-Christians or atheists? What historical data are they using to make that determination? Join me as I answer these questions and more on Saturday, March 26, 2015, at the Abundant Life Community Church at 1 p.m. Most historians and non-Christian New Testament scholars 30 or 40 years ago who examined the evidence for the resurrection laughed at the thought. But today, about two-thirds of those scholars are no longer laughing, even as non-Christians. They're convinced that disciples believe they saw the resurrected Christ. On March 26, we will see why they made such a shift. As our children go off to college and take required philosophy courses, Their faith is challenged and often weakened based on the questions they're not equipped to answer. I know, because I have a son in college. Bring them with you on March 26th. I'll show, based on the latest scholarly research, the historical data, that most New Testament critics say that Paul and the apostles believed they saw the risen Lord. The historical evidence for the resurrection of Christ will be presented on Saturday, March 26th, at the Abundant Life Community Church, located at 1216 Sydney at 1 p.m., Use your GPS. You can also call me at 314-643-7050, 314-643-7050, or go to www.thecbcradioshow.com. See you there. Welcome back to the CBC Radio Show. I'm your host, Evangelist Nona Thomas. And friends, I told you at the top of the program, we're going to be talking with a great man of God this morning. Truly, he is. And I'm so excited about the things that are going on at his church. I'm so excited about what really he is doing in the body of Christ. So I want to welcome to the CBC Radio Show, Mr. Van Swart, the worship arts pastor of the Word at Shaw Church. Good morning. Hey, good morning. It's good to be here. It's Well, you know what? It's good to hear your voice, my brother. Let me tell you. <laughs> now, I, I didn't prep you on this question, but this is what I ask everybody who comes on the show. And that is, is this the day that the Lord has made for you? Uh, most definitely is, and I am worshiping and being glad in it. All right, all right, yes, yes, you are. Well, you know, there's just a, an electricity that's going on over on the south side with the word at Shaw Church. So, you know, what's happening over there? <laughs> I know a little something about it, but yeah, just a, a new ministry that we planted down in the Shaw neighborhood a little bit over five years ago now. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, we've just been there serving the community um, on a daily basis ever since we opened shop. You know, that's a uh, you you really are uh, serving the community. And of course, under the leadership of Pastor Keith Scarborough, I mean, he's really he's fantastic, isn't he? Oh, yeah. He's the man. Yep, he holds it all together for us. Everything. I know he does. Uh, Tell us about some of the ministries that are represented at the Word of Shaw. Uh, Different day to day or weekly ministries we have going on. One. It's kind of a lot to go through, but I'll I'll do the best that I can right now in the time that we have. But one, uh, and what actually led me to the church plant, is a ministry called Furnish and Hope, uh, to where we work with different transitional houses um, and different programs. And what happens is once the women or the the men go through a certain amount of training with with their shelter or home they're in, they're able to come to our church and pick out furniture to furnish their new apartment and they're transitioning through the different uh, programs. 
And so uh, Pastor Keith really made it look like a, it's a Rockman's furniture or something <laughs> in our uh, in, in our in our the lower bottom of our facilities at the church. So they get to come in and not just go through a whole bunch of stuff piled on top of one another, but they get to come in and shop uh, with dignity. And the best part about it for them all is that it's all free, uh, no charge. Folks donate donate us furniture um, on a regular basis. We always have uh, overstock of furniture, so we never run out. But it's not junk either. They get to come in and pick some really quality uh, materials that are moving into their new place. You know, I have seen... I, I have seen that, and you're right. It's like it's like a, a a brand name furniture store, and and that's God too. Because you know we have to meet people where they are, not just spiritually to lead them to Christ, but but naturally people. You know you, we have to be a tangible touch, don't you think? Oh yeah, and even with this uh, particular ministry. Uh they don't necessarily become members of our church or anything, but they get to pass through. We get to share the gospel. We get to pray. We get to uh, share memories with them as well. Um, but it's definitely just a service that we provide for the community for these folks. So, yeah, it's not even just to grow our church, but we really are here just serving the community in word and in deed. That's it. It's really about outreach. And I, from the time that I have been affiliated with the church, I have seen great outreach ministries. Tell us about other things that the church is doing. Um, another thing we have going on every Wednesday, uh, we have AA on the Rocks and uh, Nine Al Anon. And that's a, a night where um, if you have different addictions that you were overcome and you just need a group of a body of folks to be around for encouragement from week to week, uh, we have that every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. In, the, in our coffee shop at the church. Um, another ministry we have going on through the week is called SNAP. It's the Shaw Neighborhood After School Program. So on Thursday nights, we have Glorita and Brooke. They lead up our SNAP program, and kids come there every week, and they can do homework, learn crafts, learn music, uh, work on our computers in the computer lab, uh, just different things like that, giving them an opportunity to be off the streets and uh, to be in a fun environment. Uh, so that's another one. You know, I have seen uh, the results. I've seen uh, the children participate in the SNAP program. And, I mean, they they just seem like they're having so much fun. I mean, it's really a great atmosphere, isn't it? Also, it's a blessing, yep. And then for me, with me being in the the art side of it, I get to utilize some of those kids on Sunday mornings from time to time. Uh, They'll come and share a song. Or uh, one time we did a little drum line using little uh, Home Depot buckets, <laughs> so they were keeping rhythm on stage doing our praise and worship service, uh, banging on buckets with drumsticks, and that was a, a good, uh, fun time for us. Yeah, so it's definitely uh, helping the kids, and it's helpful for us as well, being able to be, like I said, again, serving the community in that capacity. Yes. You know, one thing I love about the, the, the church ministry there is that you guys are really, you, you're out of the box. I, I don't know if there ever was a box. What do you think? <laughs> well, you, well, you see, you know, it's hard for, to get with us sometimes because of all the work that's going on. So <laughs> it's, always, it's never a dull moment at all. But it's, it's a lot of work. Uh, like we say, we, a lot of folks want to sign up for full-time ministry. Um, and sometimes for them, that looks like just Sunday morning and a Wednesday night Bible study. But uh, we're really engaged in full-time ministry uh, pretty much seven days a week. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you brought up that point. I want you kind of to expound on that because, yes, you know, sometimes we, we, we look at that from the outside and, you know, everything seems, you know, you know, just polished and it's running smooth. But there is there's a labor in ministry. There is a sacrifice that you have to make to make sure things are done in excellence and until the glory of God. Am I right? Oh, yeah. And like you say, Pastor Keith, he's been a great leader at that um um, he, first thing he did coming into the community, into the neighborhood, he just went and just served. He wasn't just inviting folks to church. He just went into the community, uh, meeting folks and uh, just being there with the people and, and participating in the neighborhood watch meetings and things like that. And that's not a, a, a nine to five gig right there. <laughs> that's um, all day, every day, <laughs> not getting home to nine and 10 o'clock at night. But yeah, so it's, it's definitely a, um, it's definitely not for everybody, but like I say, uh, full-time ministry is what we do uh, seriously down here in the neighborhood and beyond. That's right. That's right. Well, I want to let my listeners know, if you're just tuning in this morning, we're talking with Vance Watt, the worship arts pastor at The Word at Shaw Church. Uh, Brother Vance, tell me, In you say there were many things that led you to the church, that you believe the Lord led you to the church to be a part of what's going on. I, I want to ask you what continually keeps you at the church? I uh, definitely the calling of the Holy Spirit and where God has planted uh, my family. Uh, so that's, that's definitely the first thing. But like I say, things like um, I was tired of doing church and just having church in the typical 
uh, week to week thing or whatnot. And it's it's good and it works. We all need a, a place to be um, for where we are in our lives. But I was actually just looking for more and wanting to be more involved on a regular basis, like I say, real uh, real full time ministry, and just the different things like the furnishing hope and the snap program and the different programs that we were able to create down here. Um, that's just really what I was looking for. Um, one thing I didn't mention, we we do a poetry night, an open mic night uh, every so often um, where people can just come in off the streets and share their, their gifts and talents or whatnot. It's not necessarily all Christian and um, and just all about Jesus every time, but it's just another opening door for them. But just trying to find those different things where we can meet people where they are on their journey, and then in that journey we can help and encourage them to uh, continue to see Christ and continue to live for Christ uh, along the way. Yeah. yeah, so that's what that's what initially led me down here. Just really tired of, um, well, not even just necessarily tired of, just knowing that there was something more. That's it. Yeah, there was there was more that I that I could be doing with my gifts and my talents yes. versus just versus just doing the music on Sunday mornings and on a Wednesday night practice or Bible study. Right, right. And, you know, we could take uh, another hour just to really talk about the gifts and the talents that the Lord has poured into your life. Uh, you know, uh, uh, for those who may not know your, your, your birth name, as they say, uh, they may know the stage name in which you have traveled all across the country as praise. And I know that there are some things that the Lord has done uh, for you, for your family, and in and, and music that it's, it's really more to come. We should be looking for something real, real soon shouldn't we oh uh, yes ma'am it's always something on, in the works <laughs> yes ma'am always something in the works now um i know that we are right here this is easter month and uh the church is doing some fantastic things as we lead up to the easter uh morning service tell us about that because i know you want to invite everyone out to come and share that day right uh, yes, ma'am. Um, not even just Easter Sunday, but leading up to Easter Sunday, we're going to celebrate Palm Sunday on the 20th of March, and our service starts at 11 o'clock that day. Um, and on the 25th of March is Good Friday. We're going to have a special presentation at 7 p.m. that evening, and that's going to lead us into our Easter Sunday morning celebration on the 27th, which starts at 11 o'clock as well. Um, I can give the address is 4265 Shaw Boulevard, Six three one one zero. That's the word is Shaw forty two sixty five Shaw Boulevard uh, six three one one zero St Louis Missouri. Uh, we're right on the corner of Botanical and Shaw, and we're right on the corner where the Botanical Garden is as well. Right, that's a great landmark. You, if you if you know where the Botanical Garden is, Missouri Botanical Garden, well, you're right there at the Word is Shaw. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, you know, Pastor Keith is going to be on the uh, program uh, coming up very soon. Uh, but I, I think that you can even speak uh, on behalf of Pastor Keith on 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 how you want to reach out to the community and to invite people to come to the church. Would you do that? Oh yeah, you all. Are, everyone is always welcome. Our um, our scene is really laid back. You can wear a suit and tie if you like to. You can come in shorts and flip flops uh, if you like to. Um, uh, one, another thing that drew me to this church too is that we're able to build um, different cultures in our worship, um, in our ethnicity, in our age group. So from the music side of it, we're, we're all over the place from hymns to contemporary worship to traditional to uh, rap to some of everything. You never know what we're going to do on a Sunday morning as far as uh, worship-wise. But um, if you're just looking for a church home, even at all, the Word of Shaw may be the place for you and your family. Uh, if you can come by and just worship with us, and we'd love to have you. Indeed. Give us the times for your Bible study and for the Sunday services. Our Bible studies are Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. in our coffee shop, and then our Sunday uh, services are at 11 o'clock every Sunday morning. Um, actually, today, as this is airing, we're actually in the streets serving the community. We actually had an earlier worship service um, and then left out to go in different, into different groups into the neighborhood to do different service projects. So, um, But the, the, re- the remaining of the year will be in the, the worship facility every Sunday morning at 11. I love it. I love it. What you say, you got you to gotta go out beyond those four walls. You got to go in the streets. Huh. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I, I want to touch real quick on the children's ministry. You all have a great children's ministry as well. Ah, yes, ma'am. Yep. Yeah, we've been blessed. Uh, our babies are growing and growing and growing. <laughs> yep. And one of the things I'm working with, with them at this point now, too, is uh, identifying the ones that have the different musical talents. 
um, and just really growing and starting to do more free lessons uh, with them with singing and instruments. So that's a that's a blessing to be able to pour into our future. It is. And because, you know, that's where, I mean, your talent, one of your many talents is music. And so what you're doing is pulling that out of the young people, pulling that out of the baby so they can give God the glory. I mean, how fulfilling is that? Oh, well, I'm learning stuff from them every day. <laughs> yeah, so just yeah. So even my uh, my youngest boy Jafia, uh, after church this past Sunday morning to my office, just finishing up some things. He sits down in my Fender Rose uh, piano and just started playing something. <laughs> wow. so, I had to, so I had to stop what I was doing and push record to capture what he was doing at the time. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And that's a great feeling. That is a great feeling as a dad. And then also as the, the worship arts pastor, you know, to see that, you know, that your labor is not in vain. I, mean, oh, I yes, know I'm right about that. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. We're definitely enjoying every moment of it, too. Yes, yes. Well, again, give us the contact information for the word at Shaw. I know people are listening right now. Uh, you know, they even may be trying to come over to the church this morning. I don't know. And and then also uh, tell us about that Easter service again and, and the Palm Sunday and all that leaving up, leading up. Yes, yeah, so the word at Shaw, we're at 4265 Shaw Boulevard. Uh, St. Louis, Missouri, 63110. Our worship services are every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. We actually open the doors at 10.30 a.m. and we serve breakfast and coffee and donuts and things like that. And leading up, if you would like to join us for Palm Sunday, Good Friday, or Easter Sunday, we'd love to have you. Um, we have a lot of different special things in store for these particular services and presentations as well. So we would definitely love to have your family and friends to come out and join us. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I love you. You are my friend, I tell you. And I'm excited about what God is doing, not only at, in the church, but in your personal ministry as well. Thank you for being a part of the CBC Radio Show. Hi, right, Smith. Thanks for having us. Friends, thank you for listening to the CBC Radio Show. Go to the website, cbcradioshow.com. To God be the glory. Christian Business Connection. Connecting your business or ministry to the world.